Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how you can have characters follow along a path inside of Godot with relative ease. Okay, so you can see in my scene that there are a few important nodes. There's a path 2D, that is this blue line that you see here with set points, which defines where any path follow 2D is going to take the character. And the path follow 2D has an important value called an offset, which is going to determine at what point along the path that any character attached to it is located at and then of course we have whatever character we want to move along the path in this case it's just a running bunny sprite nothing fancy about that no script attached at all so we can recreate that really quickly in a new scene so let's add one here so i'm going to do a 2d node as the root of the scene i'm going to right click add a child node so let's get a path 2d created so the path 2d node you may notice that there are some new tools up here notably this add a point and empty space tool so with that we can start defining the path where the characters are going to follow so you left click to add your first point you left click again to add your second point and now any character can run from here to here so let's just create a loop around our level here so just like that, anytime you accidentally add an extra point, you can use the delete point tool over here. And if you want to complete your path because you're doing something more like a race car game, then you can click on the close curve button, which will attach the last point to the first point, creating a full loop that you can go around as many times as you need. So let's create the path follow 2D node. So right click on the path 2D, add child, and search for path, you'll find path follow 2D. Now that needs to be attached directly below the path 2D. And this path follow 2D, once again, contains the offset value, which is going to determine where any underlying sprites are going to move along the path. So you can see the path follow here. It's basically a point in space that can rotate and loop as it moves along this path track. So if we set the offset value here, you'll see that it'll keep moving along the path. When it gets to these corner areas, as long as rotate is checked on, it will rotate the point and that also means it's going to rotate any sprites underneath it, which you may or may not want, depending on what kind of game you're going for. And then when it gets all the way to the end here, if loop is on, it's going to loop back to the beginning and reset the offset value. Otherwise, it'll get stuck here at the end, and maybe you delete the character when it gets to there. If it's a tower defense, you can have it deal damage to the player or whatever you want. And the only other real thing here is cubic interpolation. So when it gets to these corner areas, if you want the movement to look a little smoother, you can leave that on. Or if you want the movement to be totally consistent and linear, then you can uncheck cubic interpolation. So next, we need to have a character attached to this path follow 2D. So let's go ahead and drag in the bunny scene. I'm going to drag it right under the path follow 2D. So now as long as we change the value of the offset, it's going to control the bunny as well. So here you can see it's rotating. If we were doing something like a 2D platformer or maybe even a tower defense game, it might not make sense for the rotation to be on. So we can just turn that off. And now if it keeps going along the path, it's going to keep the same orientation no matter what. If you had rotation on before though, you may need to reset that back to zero degrees here in the transform. Now because the path follow 2D is going to apply that offset to all of the characters listed below it, I think what you would want to do if you're doing like a tower defense game is to actually have multiple path follow 2Ds, one for every character so that they can all have their own offset. So for that reason, we're actually going to attach the script to the path follow 2D and then we can create copies of that as many times as we need. So to give it a different name, I think I'll take this path follow 2D and call it character follower 2D. Just to kind of demonstrate a little more what we're actually trying to accomplish, we'll go create a new script here. So for the inspector, click on script and the empty and do new script. So I will save this in the default directory for now, character follower 2D. And we can delete everything except for the first line and the last three lines of code here. So we're going to keep using that function process delta. And the thing that we're going to require here is going to be to take the current offset, set it to a new value based on its current offset. And then that new value should include the character's movement speed over time, so multiplied by delta. So let's go ahead and write that in code. First off, at the top, we're going to need a character speed. So we could call it run speed here, export var run speed. And we can default that to something like 20. And since this script already extends path follow 2D, we have access to the same functions that a path follow 2D node has. So we can do set offset here, and we're going to need to give it a new value. So that new value should be based on the current offset. So get offset, and then we'll add 
the run speed multiplied by delta. So the delta is the time since the last frame. And this will make it so that the character moves at a consistent speed uh, because the time duration for each frame may not be the same. So it's important to multiply it by the delta so that the running is consistent as it displays on the screen. Okay, so we can go ahead and save this script here. Uh, we'll also save the level scene. So I will call it level tutorial here for the scene. And uh, we'll actually save that in there. And I'll save that in the main directory. So we have our character follower 2D. Let's go back to 2D mode so that we can take a look at the level. And I'm also going to reset the offset to zero here. It would be better to type it in. So offset of zero. Now we can save the scene. I will hit up here play scene. So we're playing the edited scene and we can see what happens here. Okay, so we can test our follow path now. So the character is moving from the left side of the screen to the right side. Um, we made the path much bigger this time, so it's going to get right up here to the edge before it starts going down. But there should be no rotations because we have rotation off. And it's just going to keep going. I don't know if we had loop on. So we do have loop on. So in theory, when it gets back here to the start in a second here, it should return to the start and keep looping around indefinitely. Okay, so there it went back to the start. Okay, so that's great for one character. Um, depending on what kind of game you're making with this, you may want uh, additional characters to spawn. So what we could do just for fun is tell the Path 2D node to create an additional child character follower after five seconds or so. So let's just go ahead and write that up real quick. I'm going to create a new script on the Path 2D and I'll call it Path Spawner, I guess. So we can come up here and set a timer. So I'll call it variable timer equals zero and then variable spawn time is 10. We'll get rid of this bit and then in function process delta we'll just take the timer and set its new value equal to timer plus delta and then if the timer value is ever over the spawn time then we'll add a new child and so after the spawn time has elapsed we'll create another instance of that character follower script so here we're actually going to need to take the character follower and to save it as a scene so that we can instantiate it so i'll call this bunny character follower so even though it's created as a separate scene and you jump in there and it might give you a warning about how it has to be a child of a path 2d node as long as in the main level it's still attached to the path uh it should still be able to run so that's good and now we can take this scene and we can use that in the script to instantiate it so what i can create up here is a follower and then we can have this follower preloaded and ready to use in the scene with the preload function so as soon as we put the parentheses, we can select a resource from the list here. So this is the one we want. Another way to do it, which may be easier if there's too many items in your list, is just to take the character follower scene and pop it right in there. And it will be put in quotes correctly for you to use. So now after the timer elapses, we just need to create an instance of this new follower variable. So let's create variable new follower equals follower dot instance. And now we can add that as a child to this uh, path 2D node. So we want to add the new follower. So if all goes well, after 10 seconds, the character will be added and added to the path 2D node. And it'll start running along the path, just like the one that is already attached. So let's go ahead and test that, run the scene. So we have our first character here going to be running for about eight more seconds or so. And then a new one should pop in over here. Oh, okay, so that did kind of work, except now we have like a bazillion game objects. <laughs> so let's go back to the path 2D. So we can either have a variable set, like variable has spawned equals false. And then when the first character spawns, this gets set to true. Or what we could do is reset the timer. So I guess we'll reset the timer. So timer equals zero. So now one character will be created every 10 seconds not every frame after 10 seconds has elapsed. Let's also change the spawn time to like five seconds. If you want, you can make it a export variable. And what that'll do here is make it so that you can click on the path 2D node in the inspector and you can change the spawn time here rather than needing to edit it in the script directly. One last thing that we may want is that after the character gets to the end, uh, rather than looping, we can remove it. So let's take the character follower 2D 
scene, the original scene. So click in to access the original values and then we'll turn off looping. So if you do it here, that'll apply anywhere else this scene is instantiated in the game. So we go back here to the level and you'll see that it is turned off here in the loop checkbox. And what we can do is that if the character actually gets to the end, we can just remove it. In a tower defense game, this would probably mean dealing damage to the player. So the character gets to the end, it deals damage to the player, and we remove it after that because it's already finished its goal. So in script, we can do this quite easily by seeing if it's gotten to the end offset. So let's create a variable for the new total offset. And then that is going to be equal to this bit over here. So G and then get offset and I'll get rid of that. And if it hasn't reached the end, it is still going to be using set offset new offset. So we need to check if the new offset value has reached the end or not. Okay, so what we can use here to check if it's gotten to the end is gonna be this unit offset value. So the unit, so back on the level, if we go back to 2D mode, this unit offset basically is synced in line with the offset, but the offset is a pixel value, basically along the path, how many pixels have you moved? But the unit offset is, in a sense, the percentage of how far along the path you've gotten. So if this unit offset reaches one, then that means you have achieved 100% of the path and at that point, we can remove the character. So back in the bunny follower script. So what we can do here is after the offset is set, we can check to see if it's reached the end. So if the get unit offset is equal to one, in addition to checking for the unit offset, I'm also going to check if looping is enabled or not. So loop equals false and get unit offset equals to one. If all that's true, we'll do some stuff. Okay, so the reason loop, we want that to be equals to false is if loop is true, then that would imply the character needs to loop around the track multiple times and we don't actually want this bit here to actually do anything. So if the unit offset is one, it's reached the end and it's not going to loop, then we want to remove the character. And so the quickest, easiest way to remove the character follower node would just be to do a Q underscore free here, which means it's going to destroy itself effectively. So now we can go back to the level tutorial in uh, 2D mode, and we can go ahead and test this. So let's go ahead and play the scene. We have our first bunny running along the path, and the second one should spawn soon, so spawn time five. And uh, I guess the way we set it up, it's going to keep spawning bunnies, which should go all the way to the end and then eventually they are going to delete themselves. So another th another variable you could change, the character follower, you can change the run speed here. That's an export variable as well. So you can just set that if you need it to move faster. It does the queue free, removes itself, it's gone. It doesn't do anything. You'd have to set up more script if you needed it to do damage to the player or that kind of thing. But the bunnies just keep running along the path. They get freed up here. And that is basically how you can have characters move along a path and also a little bit of spawning and self-removing scripts thrown in for good measure. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content. I'll include the scripts down below in the description.